Hey there crewmates, how's it going? It's Miff Crew here. Today we are going to be looking at how to make smooth animations in Source Filmmaker, aka how to use transitions um, specifically in a smooth way. So this tutorial was requested by Da Funky Monkey. So yeah, I'd like to thank you so much for your request and without further ado, let's get right into this. So basically, Lando the Funky Monkey was having issues when uh, his animations, they look robotic. And this um, could be just a transitional thing. Uh, so we're going to look at ways of dealing with this. So um, in this case, uh, I have prepared a little animation where Foxy is uh, rotating his head uh, from side to side. Uh, so as you can see, it looks like if we go here real quick, there we see that it kind of all oh, that one moment it's going this way, then all of a sudden it starts going the other way. Like it doesn't really look smooth, it doesn't really flow as much, perhaps. And uh, also on this keyframe over here, we can see that even though there is a keyframe here that uh, has his head rotated this way, uh, we will see that it kind of updates like as soon as it gets to that keyframe here so uh, we are going to be looking at how to fix these exactly now before you get started with this I'd like to quickly point out that I am going to assume that you have uh, a bare basics understanding of Source Filmmaker um, if not however then that's okay I am going to link a tutorial at the end where I cover the very basics of how to use Source Filmmaker and I always try to make my tutorials as easy to follow as possible anyway and I also have this new YouTube jacket not sure if it looks better in not sure if the black one looks better the red one looks better if I look better with a cap we're going to find out. So what we're going to want to do here is that we're going to want to first of all play around with the transitions. So like when it comes to transitions, I don't know, it's a bit of a weird one. I am still trying to figure them out myself here. What I have managed to work out though from what I've gathered at least is that when you select a keyframe, you may notice these little lines at the bottom here get highlighted. So uh, for example, we have this keyframe selected right here and these lines right here are selected. Um, when we left click on this keyframe right here then we have these lines here selected and these lines right here selected and from what I can work out this is basically uh, what it's going to be affected when you change transitions basically so like when you swap transitions so in this case I am going to want to try and error around a little bit so in this case I'm going to left click on this keyframe here because it affects the motions uh, between these two keyframes here and these two keyframes here so it covers a lot more keyframes that way and um, in order to have it that more of a smooth movement here um, you can uh, go through the uh, transition options uh, and check them out for yourself if you like to but the one that I find to be uh, most smooth from my experience if, is the spline transition right here so if you were to left click on this if you were to play it back then you'll see it has a lot more of a flow to it basically like it almost uh, the animation almost continues uh, slightly like it kind of like slows down at the end and like comes to a pause almost uh, before it stops and that seems to really give it a nice uh, smooth looking uh, realistic feel now when it comes to fixing this snappy movement right here, there are multiple ways of doing this. There actually there are multiple ways of fixing the robotic looks. But before I do, I am going to uh, swap my clothing and see what I look best in. Okay, I am back with my red YouTube jacket. What do you prefer, red or black? Okay, without further ado, the other ways we are going to cover in order to get a smooth transition between the movements is we are going to uh, go to one of the keyframes here. In this case, it is this keyframe right here. Uh, we are going to want to then go to the motion editor, make a bookmark, and we're then going to want to go back to the graph editor, go to the next keyframe here. Uh, basically we are bookmarking the two keyframes that we would like there to be a smoother transition between here so we are there, yep, then going to go to this other keyframe here uh, we are then going to place another bookmark after going back to the motion editor and we are then going to click uh, one of the square brackets on our keyboard in this case it is the left one um, what this will do is that it will select the motion between the uh, two keyframes that we have selected uh, through bookmarks really. Uh, once we have done that, we are then going to want to go either full ramp or spline I'd say. Usually spline, but 
Sometimes Rap does the trick as well. So we're going to try and spline it here. And once you drag that all the way up, you can do this by left click and holding. We're going to want to go back to the beginning of the animation then. And yeah, as you can see, it looks more smoother. It, it also doesn't slow down at the end as well. It does look a little bit more robotic though, because it kind of like uh, rotates to the left and all of a sudden rotates to the right. Uh, so I guess what we could do here, if uh, spline isn't really working out, is that we could always uh, try the ramp option. Uh, that doesn't really seem to be doing any difference. I think it's because we've already um, managed to achieve that smoothness with the spline transition. Uh, if all else fails though, then I guess I suppose we could even try the round uh, motion transition, but that barely does anything for me. I don't really remember a time, if any at all, where it actually did something. So yeah, that is a that is another way of making the animation look more smooth. Now let's say if we wanted to um, fix this little kick up here. Uh, there, were, there were multiple ways of tackling this here. What we could do here, one of the ways, is to actually go to the keyframe that we would like to and remember which frame it is on. In this case, the keyframe is on 67. So this is the 67th frame in uh, the current shot that we have selected. So we are going to want to left click on this, right click on this, and then click the uh, button up here that says cut. Uh, then we are going to want to go back to the previous frame and um, go forward one frame. Then we are going to want to right click and click on the text that says paste keys. Uh, then we are going to want to go back to the point of the animation that the keyframe was originally at here. In this case it was uh, frame 67 so we are going to keep on going across here until we find until we, until we see the number 67. And then we are going to want to um, left click and hold on the uh, keyframe that we are pasted in one frame after. So we're going to yep, want to left click and hold and carefully drag um, all the way until it is on the frame that we would like it to be. Uh, if we were to then play it back now, then we can see that it doesn't uh, look so snappy then, really. Okay, so let's say uh, you tried it and it didn't work or it just doesn't really seem uh, like the greatest way of doing it. So another way that we can fix this annoying little issue is that we can just say, um, yeah, left click on one of the keyframes, uh, whether it's this keyframe here or this keyframe right here. In this case, it is going to be this keyframe right here because it's not affecting any of the other keyframes. Uh, we are going to want to then choose one of uh, the different transitions. Uh, Again, I would always advise spline because it, it does usually look more smooth, but a uh, quick warning about sp uh, spline, it can also change the way that some things move as well. So uh, I'd always say, um, say be careful when using spline, um, see see if it compares to how it was beforehand, and if it doesn't look good, just undo it by holding down control and tap Z if you're on a Windows, though I think if you're on a Mac, then hold down command and tap Z. Once we have identified which keyframes to select to adjust the transition, then we are going to want to click on the spline uh, tangents or any of the other tangents, as long as you don't click on uh, strap tangents because that would actually make it snap as it is right now. So yeah, let's um, change the transition now to spline. Let's see if this works. As you can see, it did not work there. Um, like I said earlier, it's a bit of trial and error with um, transitions of which one to select here and uh, while we are going to do that I am going to take my cap off. Okay, should I or should I not wear a cap on camera? Either who. Um, we are going to then try selecting the keyframe beforehand instead of the keyframe that it leads to here and then changing the transition. Again, in this case it's going to be spline and if we were to then uh, go back then we will see that it goes pretty smoothly there. Um, and yes, that is um basically how you fix those and uh, and of course if, if that doesn't work either then we can always go to this keyframe over here go to the motion editor again uh, set a bookmark go to the keyframe here go to the motion editor set another bookmark um in this case we're going to want to click the right square bracket on the keyboard and that should select the motion right there in between those bookmarks that we have created there and yep if we hit spline uh, ramp or rounds, then uh, one of those should do the trick here and uh, yeah, 
should look good. Uh, I guess, uh, considering that we're also covering transitions while we're here, then I think I'm uh, going to cover, like, I, I don't know, I guess I, like, I, like I kind of feel I should cover the other transitions, because uh, it is like a video on transitions, but truth be told, I actually don't know too much about them myself, so I'm just going to say what I know, really. <laughs> yeah, let's say if you didn't want this, a um, if you didn't really like the look of the way that the spline um, transition looks here. One thing I'd advise is um, switching it over to uh, Lydia, really. So I'm going to select both keyframes just because I really don't know which one uh, selects which for the transition. <laughs> um, I'm going to go to this little picture over here that says uh, linear and uh, I'm going to yep left click on that and then that will um, give it the linear transition and all the others really except from uh, this one here are basically variations of either spline or linear really so if we select um, this one let's say flat then uh, yep it's um it looks okay uh, kind of similar to spline but at the same time it seems to have a a slightly different motion so and if you were to go this to this one over here let's say uh, it looks exactly the same as spline actually you didn't really see it move much there um if you were to go to yeah, equalize let's say that has a slight difference as well so yeah they all have their different variations really and also lando da funky monkey i was having the issue of controlling the speed of the animation as well. I'm going to quickly show how that's done here. So basically the best way to think of this here is that the more far apart each keyframe is from each other, the longer they are going to take to get to each other. Uh, the closer they are to each other, the faster they are going to get to each other, if that makes sense. So let's say for example, um, this keyframe right here was all the way over here, let's say. Then, because I, um, the keyframe before this keyframe is this keyframe over here, then it is going to take a lot longer to get over there, basically, because it's uh, longer apart, if that makes sense. But if we were to uh, drag it nearer, uh, then um, it'll go a lot faster because it's uh, closer together, so it can. Uh, so it can travel from one position uh, to another a lot quicker, basically, if that makes sense. Another way of doing this here is to identify the end point of the animation and the start point of the animation uh, of, on the um, on the, what you are trying on the part of the animation that you are trying to uh, uh, get right here. So in this case, the ending point of the animation is the final keyframe here and the starting point of the animation is the first keyframe here. So, so basically what I'm going to want to do here is that I'm going to want to go to the end of the animation. Um, I then going to want to left click on the clip editor down here. And I then going to want to click uh, left click on the shot um, that the animation is on. And I'm going to want to click the B button on my keyboard. Um, you will then see a little uh, spit on the current shot that we have selected. What we're going to want to do here is that we're going to want to click on the shot with the animations uh, on it. In this uh, in this case, it is the one to the left. Uh, we are then going to want to go back to the start here. And you may notice that we actually don't need to do any uh, chopping up because it's already at the start point. Um, but let's say, for example, if you're in the middle of an animation and you didn't have a, a and you had more of the shot back here, let's say, when there wasn't really an animation going on, then let me just say uh, demonstrate that real quick. Um, yep. Yeah, so let's say if there was not really much animation going on before the start of the animation, then what we're going to want to do is that we are going to yep yeah, again being on the clip editor, we are going to want to uh, left click on the shot and then press B on the keyboard again. And then what we have here is that we have um, a shot that is completely dedicated uh, to this animation, basically. So uh, the very start of the animation is the very start of the shot, and the very end of the animation is the very end of the shot. Now, if we were to uh, um, zoom in a little bit here by uh, scrolling upwards on our 
uh, on our mouse or uh, doing this motion here with your fingers on the mouse pad in the graph editor and your mouse being over here then um, uh, We should be able to then uh, Yeah, uh, go be on the clip editor and then in order to speed it up or to slow it down We are going to want to hold down control uh, Hold down alt Hold down shift all at the same time and then you will notice a uh, they, You're just gonna want to keep on hovering your mouse over the edge here until you see a little square bracket pointing to the right. If we were to then left click and hold and drag to the left let's say if we wanted to make it faster then um, it should be able to go faster then. Or if you were to uh, do it exactly the same but um, drag to the right while right, right left click and holding then it should be going a lot slower then. Um, so yeah, that is basically how you also uh, adjust the speed of the animation, both within keyframes and the animation overall uh, within the selected shot. And yeah, that's pretty much all for now, crew mates. Uh, what should I wear on camera? Uh, black YouTube jacket, red YouTube jacket, uh, black YouTube jacket with a cap, red YouTube jacket with a cap. So yeah, that is basically all for now. Thank you for watching, crewmates. It is Mif Crew here, and I'll be back with more videos coming soon. Goodbye, crewmates.